Have you ever wondered what it's like to grow up as a princess? Is it all chairs and tea parties, or is there a darker side to the fairy tale? Stick around as we pull back the royal curtain today. Hey guys, it's Chris. Today we're diving deep into the lives of princesses from their childhood to adulthood. Stay tuned as we unveil the hidden stories behind royal lives. We've probably all admired their lives at some point. But what is it really like? Let's take a look at the lives of famous princesses, mainly the popular Victorians up to the present day. Let's start with June 1838, during the reign of Queen Victoria, a period known as the Victorian era. This period is also known for the intriguing lives of common people. But today we focus on the royals. Queen Victoria's reign lasted 63 years, the second longest in history after Queen Elizabeth II. Victoria was born on May 24, 1819 at Kensington Palace in London. You might think that when a child is born, that grandparents or other close relatives would rush to the hospital. However, for royalty, the intensity starts right from birth. Despite being low in the line of succession, Victoria's birth drew a large crowd to the palace to visit her and her mother, the Duchess of Kent. There was a huge procession of carriages from Kensington Palace where she was born to Hyde Park Corner. Don't you think it's challenging for royalty to lead a normal social life from the moment they are born? By the way, Victoria's mother had a rather unique name Victoria of saxe coburg saalfeld Initially, Victoria wasn't high in the line of succession. However, as she grew up, her older cousins, who were ahead of her in the line, began to pass away, changing her position dramatically. By the way, Victoria's father was Prince Edward, a son of King George III of England. Prince Edward was obsessed with his house, and his home renovations caused him to run up terrible debts. Since he is the son of a king, he may have been raised too well and his Prince Edward, lacking financial acumen, tried to cut costs by renting a house from a wealthy friend. He started living with his wife and baby Victoria. In a cottage by the sea, far from London, However, her father, Prince Edward, caught pneumonia and died there. Victoria was not even one year old at the time. The early absence of her father was one of the main reasons for Victoria's unhappy childhood. For example, it is easy to imagine that not having a father early in a family with no money would cause a lot of hardships for the mother and the child. So, what happens in a wealthy Family especially one with a child who could become a future queen when the father is absent early on. The absence of a father figure in such a high-profile family could attract individuals with malicious intentions. What kind of things happen? Usually children who are heirs to the throne are handed over to the monarch of the time. There they would be educated and given guardianship. However, her late husband, Prince Edward, who believed in his wife, designated his daughter Victoria's guardian as his wife. The problem here is that Victoria's guardian, her mother, was a German who had married in England but could not speak English. Filled with anxiety, she questioned her ability to raise this child effectively. At that time, a tall, dark-haired, handsome man appeared on the scene and asked her, Are you all right? I can help you. His name was John Conroy, a handsome man with black hair. He immediately gave her a bank loan for her lack of money. If you were in a tight spot and a charismatic stranger suddenly appeared, offering financial help, would you trust him or be skeptical? Was the dark-haired handsome man Conroy a good man? Of course, the original goal was to consolidate power between the mother and her son. Victoria's mother placed her complete trust in him, delegating responsibilities such as auditing secretarial tasks public relations and political advising. The two were often rumored to be lovers. Perhaps it was the power of love, but Victoria's mother quickly learned to speak English, which she had never been able to do before while spending time with him. As she learned to speak English, she was influenced by Conroy and began to meddle in political matters, which was quite disliked by the members of the royal family. Now things got even worse from here. Conroy instituted the dreaded Kensington system in order to gain power by controlling the future. Queen Victoria with her mother, 
Amazingly, Victoria was not allowed to spend time alone and slept on a cot next to her mother's bed every night until she became queen at the age of 18. Even during the day, she was not allowed to see strangers or third parties without the presence of her governess. On the contrary, her mother did not even allow her to see relatives who adored Victoria. Of course, she was not allowed to play with other girls or make friends. Victoria played with dolls and dogs. However, she was often put in contact with the steaming Conroy's daughters. According to Victoria's diary, she did not like them very much. To ensure her safety, Victoria could never walk alone on the stairs and always had to hold an adult's hand while moving around. To help her mother assess her behavior, Victoria was required to record her daily conduct in a manners notebook. The only reason to go outside was for political reasons. As the next Queen Victoria lady, Victoria could only venture out for carefully planned occasions. These were orchestrated by Conroy and his associates to politically promote her as the future monarch. She would go to the provincial cities of England and match the aristocracy. The king was quite unpopular at the time, and Victoria was seen as the people's hope. To capitalize on this, an image strategy was crafted. In order to make Victoria the queen, she had to live a healthy life. Victoria was required to exercise using the Indian club, a wooden tool in the shape of a bottle, which was crazy popular at the time. This sounds kind of fun, doesn't it? It is interesting. To note that the needs of women have not changed much in the past 170 years, and they are still the same today. Victoria was also encouraged to breathe fresh air, a habit she maintained throughout her life even if it meant making her valets freeze. While some habits were beneficial, the overall environment was detrimental. As it led to her daughter being brainwashed, her education started at age five, with a strict daily schedule from 9.30 a.m. to 5.00 p.m., focusing on etiquette and foreign languages. Victoria learned Greek, Latin, Italian, French, and German. Victoria's mother and Conroy hoped to serve as regents for her, seizing power if she didn't reach adulthood before the king's death. However, King William IV, the reigning monarch at the time, saw through this scheme. Surprisingly, the king delivered a speech at his birthday party. In his later years, he said, I believe I have one more year to live. Then the royal authority could be passed on to Victoria, who had come of age. The Kensington system, which avoids the situation where that abominable person becomes regent, life must have been hard. At this point, Victoria started to cry when she heard the king's speech. Nine months after this awkward birthday party for the king, Victoria turned 18, and her mother was prevented from becoming regent. King William IV, perhaps relieved, watched Victoria turn 18 and died a few weeks later. Shortly after Victoria became queen, she said, Give me some time alone. Please move my pets out of my mother's room, were her two wishes. She removed her mother from the palace and kept her distance from her until her marriage and the birth of her first child. Moving on to another iconic figure, Elizabeth II was born in 1926. A year later, her parents established their new home. The house is fairly normal by royal standards. It had 25 bedrooms and a special room, with an elevator for dancing and other activities. Needless to say, the home of a princess is worlds, apart from that of ordinary people. Elizabeth grew up playing with the daughters of businessmen and doctors. By the way, what did everyone get for their birthday when they were children? It is interesting to see the different generations. What do princesses get? What Elizabeth received for her sixth birthday? A small house equipped with a kitchen, living room, bedroom, and bathroom. It also came with a miniature tea set, just like in England. The gift was from a Welsh citizen. In 1939, World War II began and five bombs were dropped on Buckingham Palace. Queen Elizabeth II was 13 years old at the time. The time, Elizabeth gave a speech on the BBC for children, who were separated from their parents to take refuge from the war. The war continued, and in 1945 Elizabeth became a mechanic in the women's unit of the British Army. Elizabeth spent time with the women in her unit, 
an experience she later described as the only time in my life I was able to test my strength with people my own age. What does this imply? Up until Elizabeth's generation, royal children were generally homeschooled and did not attend traditional schools. They lacked the school experience of being compared and competing with peers their own age. Believe it or not, there are people who grow up in such unique circumstances. Ever since we can remember, competitive society has been the norm for us. It was an eye-opener to know that there are people who live this way. Which environment would you have preferred to grow up in? Royalty, where you are born with honor, great wealth, and power. Of course, there are these benefits, however. It is not only the privileged environment that surrounds them. Prince Leopold, Queen Victoria's son, once likened noblemen to stage actors, saying they must constantly strive to please the public. Would you like to live the life of a royal? Interestingly, Victoria's strict childhood diet included only young deer meat and milk for her dinners. As a result, she had an ambition to eat mutton every day when she grew up. While the grass may seem greener on the other side, we all have our struggles. Let's hope for a brighter tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more insightful content. Take care and see you in the next video. Goodbye.